So after that, good news. I have more news after lunch. Welcome back in the second block of dictionaries and lexical databases. Uh, this time we have four speakers here. And the first one is Sini Sharunjajic from Institute for Croatian Language and Linguistics. And he's going to speak about repository for the argument adjunct distinction Sargada. The floor is yours. And thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Sini Sharunjajic, uh, and I'm the third and the last author of this presentation. So I've sent the greetings from my dear colleagues uh, and bosses, uh, Matea Birtic and Ivana Brač, who are the main investigators, uh, principal in investigator and, and researchers on this project. Uh, first of all, just like, like a short introduction, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with some verb valency. So uh, when we create any kind of dictionary, we certainly have to have some basic knowledge ab about certain grammatical phenomena of our language or some more languages depending on what we are doing. When we are doing the valency lexicon, uh, probably we have to have more knowledge about grammatical phenomena than about dictionary metho methodology or lexicography practice and theory. Uh, so this uh, building of a valence dictionary or a valence lexicon is a, is a case of a closer connection between uh, methodology of lexicography and uh, grammaticography because valency dictionaries are type of resource that use uh, both methods at the same time. Uh, one such dictionary is Eglava. Eglava is Croatian online verb valency dictionary. Uh, e of, or E uh, obviously stands for electronic glava is a, a Croatian word for head which is also a syntactic, very, very important syntactic term. Uh, and it's uh, shortened for uh, glagolska valency or verb valence. Uh, this is a, this verb valence dictionary is a part of bigger uh, uh, institute's uh, project, which is a valency base of Croatian verbs, which should be, <laughs> should last for some years more. Uh, we extracted a list of 900 most frequent Croatian verbs on B, B1 level for, uh, for students of le for learning Croatian as a second language uh, and divided them or classified them into 34 semantic groups according to Beth Levin's work. Uh, first group that we uh, uh, decided to to make uh, public and we and finished uh, uh, is a semantic group of uh, psych verbs. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, it was well known in in uh, uh, world literature and, and, and uh, many lingui linguistic works that uh, syntactic alternation in the class of psych verbs are very very uh, interesting. Uh, because we, you have an experience of some, of some uh, emotion or, or psychic uh, phenomena, and you can you can uh, uh, find this uh, experience uh, made like in in nominative case, in dative case, in accusative case, as you can see in those in those uh, those alternations below. Uh, all those details about. Uh, a valence dictionary itself, Eglava, you can find in older uh, Alex uh, uh, proceedings from 2017 in detail, so I won't be talking so much about them. Just this part, which is uh, connected to our next project, which is this repository for arguments and adjunct distinction. Uh, just a few words. This uh, approach to well, we have so much approaches to valency, but this was uh, based on a long, long tradition of German valence, uh, valence projects and dictionaries, which ended up with big uh, dictionary Valbu in 2004, that was printed version, and after that we have uh, electronic Valbu in Mannheim, uh, like an electronic version. Uh, this approach uh, 
put uh, the verb in the center of the sentence, and we call it dependency grammar. You, you are very, very, aware, very well aware of that. Uh, this traces back to Tenier from 1959, the stuff like that. And verb fallacy is a uh, number of types of, of, of arguments that verb requires to, to have a sentence grammatical. Or we can call it, uh, or we can rephrase it, it's a verb's capacity to combine with other elements, sentence elements uh, around them as a center. Those elements can be, in this uh, approach, can be divided or classified into two big uh, classes. Those are arguments and adjuncts. And arguments we can also, in this approach, uh, they, they, can, they can be obligatory or optional or non-obligatory. We'll talk more about it later. So this is this our role model. This is a printed Valbu dictionary. So their process was from printed version. They firstly thought about printed version, then they uh, transformed it into electronic searchable di uh, dictionary on the right side. Our approach was, of, of course, different because we started in 2014-15. So we first have to go just to electronic version, not to printed version. We developed this relatively complicated free level data, uh, data, data schema for Swanelex application for dictionary uh, uh, writing. Uh, and after that, uh, we got this. So we edited it Swanelex according to this schema. Uh, it writes down in, in native Postgres SQL ba database in, in on, on our system. It has native XML in, in, in Swanelex. Then we had to do some PHP administration and coding to, to make this output for our, for our uh, site verbs. There are 57 verb lemmas with 187 meanings and 375 valency patterns. How does it look like at the end, this output for the internet? So is it clear? Yeah. Uh, I won't go into details, but you can, you don't know Croatian, but you can understand. Uh, uh, this first red is, uh, is this uh, uh, semantic class of psych verbs, then there is, there's a grammatical block, then there is a definition for the verb reagirati, react, and then we have three uh, syntactic patterns. The first one uh, with, the, with the example, it has only experience in nominative case, and the other one, this in blue, uh -huh, I have this, sorry. Uh, this here, this is the nominative and uh, this is, uh, uh, um, come on, <laughs> uh, I can think now. Uh, this is predložna, is a prepositional uh, phrase. Uh, so, the, this is in parentheses because it, it's probably non-obligatory uh, argument of this verb. And in this third, we have uh, two non-obligatory uh, uh, parts or elements. This is a prepositional or, and adverbial phrase. So we were always uh, fighting among each other when we did, are those really this uh, prepositional and these uh, adverbial phrases, are they really arguments or are they adjuncts? And we have lost a lot of, lot of time uh, thinking and deciding this is a really part of the, of the uh, verb valency or is it an adjunct that, that, it, that isn't uh, part of the verb valency pattern in this uh, approach. So what happened then we decided to to create another uh, project uh, which, would, which would deal <laughs> with this problem so we could do the dictionary better in the next phase. You understand? So this is the, now, this is the new, new project. Uh, with the aim of the the theoretical research of the, this distinction between arguments and adjects, 
within, within uh, valency theory, cognitive grammar, and generative grammar. The applied part of the project uh, was to create some syntactic repository or some little database with, which will contain sentences with these ambiguous syntactic parts or, or, or elements, uh, sentence elements, regarding this argument and adjunct distinction. Uh, the goal, and during this four year, uh, we already did uh, three years of the project, so these first phases in the green are already done. So we have designed the, the, the database in, in SQL environment, we have a, this input interface, stable working version for all the uh, project members, and we are slowly filling the database. Uh, this is the year four of the project, so we are re re uh, revising the content and we're preparing the opening for the public at the end of the project in January 2024. The, the part of the project that looked most like lexicography a methodology was of course uh, choosing the lemma, so choosing the material for the, for the, for the repository. And we extracted a list of 130 verbs or lemmas, with, uh, which uh, select those ambiguous parts regarding this argument adjunct distinction from various sources, various grammars, various uh, uh, research or for Croatian, also for Serbian, Slovenian, Bosnian, and this uh, all <laughs> South Slavic group of languages. Uh, and we have to cl somehow classify them, so we have to decide how to classify them. And we created something we call macro groups. Macro groups according to, to which uh, type of, of uh, ambiguous parts the verb could select. So we have place adverbials, goal adverbials, and so on, so on, so on. So we have a 13 uh, macro groups of elements. Uh, we also had to decide how to uh, manually tag those sentence elements uh, in order to, to uh, uh, have this part that had to be tested uh, different from parts that are unquestionable in, 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 this, in this database. So we have uh, subject, direct object, indirect, indirect object, prepositional phrase, so on, so on. And the part that we should test is, test, is marked or uh, tagged test in the system. We, sh we shall see it later. Uh, eh, now the most complicated part that I'm not so good at it is the diagnostics. Uh, the, those are tests that we are really using for the diagnostics so for uh, arguments and adjuncts. I would rather uh, have my colleagues that are dealing more with tests than me to, to this, but you will have uh, a pretty good idea of what they mean. So we decided to, to there are more than 20 diagnostic tests for arguments and adjuncts in, in world literature and, and in theory, but uh, after months and months of trying it, there are more, there are mostly dealing with the English language, so they are uh, not easily applied on Slavic language like Croatian, or I don't know, for Romance languages and stuff like that. So uh, at the end, we came up with the seven tests that we think work for Croatian uh, to, to the certain level. First test is a <coughs> omission test or, repla uh, or optionality test. This is the um, most uh, used uh, test in, I, I think it works for all languages. It, it, uh, it separates obligatory elements from non-obligatory elements. In, in if you see this, uh, if, if a syntactic phrase cannot, can be omitted, then the sentence remains grammatical. The omitted part is not obligatory argument. 
it, it doesn't, oh, come on, I, I'll go to the test then really, really quickly. Sorry. Uh, the other test is, in, is an application test, which, which we use to, com to com uh, compensate this omission test, then we can decide which is, which this non-obligatory ele element is it argument or, or an adjunct. Then we have do so test and this happen test there. There are clean syntactic tests that, that are used for non-stated verbs. Uh, uh, we have replacement that, that deals with some uh, morphological uh, uh, replacement possibilities, substitution tests that, that, that deals with subclasses of, of uh, verbs that can be replaced one with another and this dialogue test, which is a commu communicational test. I won't go into details, we don't have time. Uh, so the, those are technical details uh, about everything. And this is how it really looks like. So we have this uh, Isabere Glago is choose verb because they are predefined. Then you choose a verb, this is Boravit to stay. This is a uh, uh, macro, macro group adverbial uh, with place, my cousin uh, stays in Chicago is is the uh, uh, sentence, and we have see this last part is test Th this in Chicago, in Chicago we are testing is it, is it an argument or an adjunct, and this is our list of of results. So first two tests says that is a, it, it is an argument. Then we have those two syntactic tests we cannot. Uh, they, they are not apl applicable because they are, this is a stative verb, so we are not using them. Our replacement test and substitution set test said it was an adjunct, and the last communicational test, dialogue test, said it's an argument. So results are arguments three of five, like 60% per percent of tests are saying that is a, that is a, that it is an argument, and 40% of this says it's an adjunct. Uh, and of course they are all uh, stored into database. We can delete it, we can we can uh, edit it again if we if we find that we are doing we did test wrong and stuff like that. Uh, what uh, at the end uh, what it is used for now this is just an uh, 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 schema in, in, in table now we can, but we can see uh, some. We can see that for place adverbials, uh, the, the 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 there's patterns. So we can finally see patterns of what tests give us, what what results for some arguments and for some agents. And at the end. Uh, we found this nice example because if we have this, this the vehicle is used to transport things. Vozilo služi za prevoz stvari. In Croatian, there there are two there are two syntactic alternations. Vozilo služi za prevoz stvari. Vozilo služi prevozu stvari with dative or with prepositional phrase at the end. But if we if we insert here this čovjeku, vozilo služi čovjeku za prijevoz stvari, vehicle serves a person to transport things. This is the only syntactic alternations with alternation only with this uh, prepositional phrase, but we, we cannot have two dative uh, 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 arguments, uh, one, we cannot say vozilo služi čovjeku prijevozu stvari in Croatian, so we have a better idea about the semantic roles and stuff like that just uh, from doing this uh, analysis in our data. So uh, the whole point of the database is to give us the better knowledge for the next pre preparation of the valence dictionary and better usage of, <laughs> of syntactic pat patterns uh, the, this uh, uh, classification and and alternations, uh, especially when we uh, include semantic roles in this speech. So, thank you for your attention. 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Now we have five minutes for questions. So are there questions from the audience? Yeah, in the back. Thank you. That was very interesting. I'm wondering, to a dictionary user, does it matter if something is an adjunct or an optional argument? Uh, no. But okay. uh, when we do, uh, sorry, uh, oh yeah, okay. Uh, when we do this uh, approach to valency, which has, uh, uh, so we don't, uh, adjuncts are not tagged in dictionary. We have to decide which is not a non-obligatory argument or an adjunct just to know what to tag in the dictionary, you know. So the user is not uh, familiar, but this is not exactly, just for the user, this is also for NLP and for, for I don't know, universal dependencies and stuff like that. And, and it's not just for users. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that you were using uh, so dependency analysis, cognitive grammar, and generative grammar in yeah. determining what is an engine, what is an argument. No, 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 no. We, uh, 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 cognitive grammar and generative grammar. Uh, we have people on the project that, that are cognitive grammars and generative uh -huh. grammars, and they have uh, uh, put their uh, uh, perspective into, into those questions. Right, no. that was my question. So the, the major criteria were those diagnostic text, uh, tests. <laughs> they are, they, we are testing those tests. What uh -huh. are they saying to us, uh -huh. really? Actually. So what is the outcome of the project then? What is uh the outcome of this supposed to be? What, after what outcome? Outcome is uh, we are, we will put it uh, online and we we have our analysis for for the next phase of of, of making the valence dictionary. Well, yes, but what we've seen so far is basically uh, you cannot tell in in a large number of cases. Uh, we have a better idea how to decide. Oh, I that see. was our goal. Okay, methodology improvement. Yeah, then. yeah. All right, thank you. More, more or less. Any more questions here in the room? Do we have any questions online? No, no questions online. We still. Okay. Well, I think if there are no other questions, we can thank you. And we will have a short break before the next speakers. Thank you. Thank you.